Welcome back to the third video in this series of four presentations about customer retention and growing your small business using My Secret Weapon. Now if you somehow missed the first two videos, you can view them by clicking the links under this video. Video number three will make much more sense if you viewed the first two. Here's a quick recap from our previous videos. Anyone who's been in business for any length of time knows the importance of follow-up in building a profitable small or home business. I mentioned this in the first video and this is really business building 101. You need a way to generate and stay in touch with leads and prospects. You need to effectively follow up with past, present, and prospective clients. And you need to have a great customer retention strategy. Successful business owners are all masters of follow-up. And yet today we have a big problem that is undercutting our follow-up methods from the past. Because of their busy lives and their experience of information overload, customers are increasingly blocking the follow-up messages we send to them. They've gotten email and junk mail filters. They've gotten voicemail so that they can return calls when and if they wish. They've gotten pop-up blockers on their computer so they can browse the internet without interruption. They have caller ID so they can screen their calls, and they've gotten DVRs so that they can record TV shows and zip through the commercials. So our messages are simply not getting through. However, the good news is there is also a big solution to this problem. You can get around all of these message blocking activities by sending out real physical greeting cards and postcards to your customers, cards that are delivered by the post office. So why does this work so well? Well, 98% of the cards that come through the mail are opened. Sending cards really helps you stand out from the crowd. It helps you create a personal brand. Receiving cards makes others, other people, feel great. Cards bypass their so-called ad filters. And sending cards builds relationships with your customers and prospects. Now in this video I want to discuss some of the best practices I recommend to help you get the best results from your greeting card and postcard follow-up efforts. Don't worry if this sounds like too much work or too expensive. In the next video, the final video, I'm going to show you the way I do this in my own business that takes me almost no time and surprisingly little money to send hundreds of cards with a few clicks of my mouse. However, before I get to the best practices, I want to introduce you to and tell you the story of Joe Girard. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Detroit area car salesman Joe Girard has sold more retail big ticket items than any other salesperson in history, in any industry, including houses, boats, motorhomes, insurance, and automobiles. In fact, Joe's sales system was so effective that for 12 straight years he sold more cars and trucks every month than all the other salespeople in his dealership combined. He sold more cars and trucks as an individual than most dealers sell in their lives. No other salesperson has ever attained this title for more than one year and no one ever for both cars and trucks. During his selling career he sold 13,001 cars all at retail. That is no fleet, no wholesale, no used cars. Joe is the only person ever inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. So how did he do it? Was Joe Girard just a better talker than most of the other salesmen? Did he spend 16 hours a day making cold calls? Did he simply slash the prices and sell cars cheaper than everybody else? Not at all. Joe's big secret was that he followed up better and more consistently than anyone else. And he did it by simply sending handwritten greeting cards. Everyone he met, spoke with, or sold a car to went into his card list, and every single month, like clockwork, they would get a friendly, personalized, handwritten, and signed greeting card. He sent out cards for every possible holiday or reason he could imagine, and these were not pushy sales messages. They were just warm and friendly reminders that Joe was thinking about them. At his peak, Joe and his two full-time card writing assistants were sending out over 13,000 cards each month. 
So let's unpack the Joe Girard story to see what we can learn from his remarkable success. Yes, he was an avid sender of cards, but exactly what did he do to make this so effective? There are really three elements which make for a really great card sending campaign. First, the cards need to in some way be personalized. Second, they need to be handwritten. And third, they need to be personally signed. So let's look at each of these three elements in a bit more detail. Number one, effective cards are personalized. You should definitely use the recipient's first name in the card and in the body of the message in the cards as well. Don't simply use a mass-produced generic message. Begin your message by addressing them with their first name and use it elsewhere in the card whenever possible. Dale Carney devoted an entire chapter in his best-selling book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, to this important principle. He said, remember that a person's name to that person is the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Here are a couple of examples of cards I've sent and how I personalize them. This one was sent by my dog to the son of a close friend who took care of her, Tibby is her name, when I was on vacation. I also included a department store gift card so he could buy himself a thank you gift. Now this one is one I sent to one of my teammates who was unable to attend a convention sponsored by my company. I wanted her to know I was thinking about her and wishing she was there. This is a card I sent to one of my customers who sent some business my way. Now that's not me on the front of the card, but in second thought, using my own picture on the front would have made it an even better card. So use the recipient's first name throughout the card. The next best practice is handwriting your cards. Your card should be in your own handwriting. The main personal message in your card should be handwritten. Now just think about it. What feels more personal when you get a store-bought card? Is it the generic message printed on the inside of the card or the handwritten note jotted down underneath? I think I know your answer. Here's an example of a thank you card I sent to one of my clients thanking them for hiring me to conduct a training session for them. It's in my own handwriting. Now, fortunately, in today's technology, it's possible to create a handwriting font of your own handwriting, not just something that looks like your handwriting, but of your actual handwriting. You see, you don't have to worry about all the time it takes to handwrite dozens of cards. The unique system I use even allows you to get your own handwriting font for your cards. Next, effective cards are personally signed. You should personally sign each and every card with your own signature. After all, personal messages are personally signed. Now, how would you like to get a card signed by one of these people? Again, if you're trying to build a personal relationship with the reader of your card, you need to sign the card with your own signature. And of course, there is a way to add signatures to your cards digitally, as you'll see in the next video. Now, for a moment, just think back to the Joe Girard story that I told you earlier, the world's greatest salesperson. Obviously, any sales and follow-up system that lands its inventor into the Guinness Book of World Records is a system that you need to take a hard look at and test in your own business. My biggest takeaways when studying Joe's story are, he made sure that every card he sent was personalized, every card was handwritten, and every card was hand-signed. Also, like all successful direct marketers, he sent out multiple mailings on a regular interval. He did not just rely on one single card to do the job or build the relationship. By sending out cards on a regular basis in a multi-step sequence, think here of card campaigns. You keep yourself, your business, and your message in front of your prospect or your customer's mind. And just because they have not yet responded, or even if they've said no, doesn't mean that their circumstances are still the same. Perhaps something in their life has changed and now the timing is right for them to be receptive to your message. I really think you should think of each and every card you send as a seed that will bear fruit when the time is right. So let's start planting some seeds. Now in the next and final video, I'm going to pull back the curtain, so to speak, and show you the system I use to follow up with my customers and clients and my prospects 
and also to stay in touch with my business partners and my business team. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.